What's up YouTube? Um, this is going to be a very basic tutorial on getting started with the inheritance effector. So I'm just going to create the simple animation where uh, the cloner objects move from an A pattern into a B pattern. They kind of morph between the two shapes. It's a pretty simple effect and we're going to create this from scratch. So I'm just going to start from scratch. I'm going to create a text object. I'm just going to label it A and then go into the settings here. For text I'm going to put A. And uh, I'm going to have to make this editable, which is a bit of a pain, but if you just highlight it and then hit C, and then go down through the stack and you'll find a spline and a sort of NURBS object, extrude object, and hit C again and you'll end up with like the A and the two caps for the front and back. So just select them all and go to objects, connect objects and delete. And now we've finally got a polygon A. And uh, if I go to point mode and then I right click, um, hit space to go into select mode, right click and um, we've got an optimize option which just kind of makes sure all the vertexes are welded together. And the mesh is nice and clean and optimized. So that's our A piece. So I'm going to create another uh, Motext object. Call this B. And then in the text option, I'm going to make a B. Just move that out. And then hit C. Find the two pieces. Hit C again. Highlight all three pieces. Object. Connect objects and delete. And that gives us the polygon B piece. I'm just going to right click again and I'm just going to optimize the mesh. Okay, so we've got our A and our B. I'm just going to get rid of this uh, point one. There we go. So now I'm going to create, oops, it's a little glitch here. Pull the screen out. There we go. I'm going to create a cloner. And uh, I'm just going to use spheres for now. So create a sphere, put it under the cloner. I'm going to make the sphere pretty small. Now in cloner, I'm going to go to uh, object mode. And I'm just going to drag and drop the A. And as you can see, the spheres are now cloning onto the A. But um, instead of vertex distribution, I want a kind of more na random natural uh, distribution. So I'm actually going to go to volume. And that way it just kind of try and put, puts them kind of randomly over the volume, which is pretty cool. And then I'm just going to make create uh, 80 clones, so just increase the count. And I'm just going to make A uh, invisible in the viewport, actual polygon. And as you can see, it's kind of scattering of sort of a A-shaped a scattering of spheres, which is a good start. So now we want these spheres to kind of move from over here to over to the B. Now, if you uh, had a look at my matrix tutorial, should really check it out but basically we're just going to create a matrix cloner which is basically just a cloner except it just stores position data and that's it there's no these squares aren't actual objects they're just like positions just kind of virtual positions so I'm gonna set this matrix to object mode and the object is gonna be B and we can see the matrix uh, positions kind of scattered over the B, which is good. And distribution, I'm going to set this again to volume. And I'm going to match the number of uh, clones we created for the A. So we created 80 clones. So I'm going to do the exact same for our, the matrix. And we've got 80 kind of positions on the B. I'm just going to make the B kind of invisible. <clears throat> so if I just go back to the cloner, now we're ready to add the effector. MoGraph effector, um, inheritance effector. I'm just going to move that down the stack. And uh, object, it's looking for an object here under a effector. And uh, yeah, that's going to be our matrix. So just drag and drop that because the matrix has basically got all the B positions. So we want it, want it to go directly to the matrix. And um, if I play with the strength, nothing happens final step is we need to tick this here morph motion object and now when you play with the slider it's cloning so I'm just going to hide the matrix in the viewport and we've got this cloning 
So um, what we what well, what we can do then is we can create a fall off, uh, just a linear fall off. I'm just going to rotate that uh, 90 degrees. Whoops. Like that. that should work. So uh, yeah, inheritance vector. If I just set the strength to 100. As you can see now, we have a much more natural uh, kind of spill over. So basically, when the effector touches the uh, A cloners, that's when they start going. Because this is a linear cloner, just imagine this like as a kind of flat infinite plane. It just slices through it, and uh, maybe we, we can adjust the fall off slightly. Seems to be a bit strong. Uh, that would be here. Actually, maybe it was better before, kind of more uh, gradual. So yeah, those are the basics of the inheritance cloner.